Hi guys, in today's video we'll be taking a look at the trackbar object. The trackbar object essentially allows you to have a user pick a numerical value between a minimum and a maximum value. So let's jump into Visual Studio and take a look. So the first thing we want to do is create a new project. It will be a Windows Forms app, .NET Framework, C Sharp. We will call this one Tracking Bar. And so we've got a standard Windows Forms app, and we will look in here for the Track Bar. I believe it's in Common Controls. I have to say it's not one that I use a lot, and it doesn't look like it's in here. So let's go into All Windows Forms Controls. And we'll scroll down to T. We've got track bar, so we'll drag that out. Uh, I guess immediately you can probably tell what this one does. It's a sort of bar with a slider on it. So if we just run the program, you see we have this sort of bar and it moves on increments. It's got these little notches and it will jump to the nearest notch on where you drag. Uh, if we close the program, we can actually control a number of elements of this track bar. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger, so we've got some more space there. So if I click on the track bar and we come down and look at the properties, we have a few properties that we'd be interested in looking at. So we've got the value, and you see the value is a numerical value. It's actually an integer. So this integer represents where the bar is on the track bar. So if I set that to 3, you see that it slides over to the third notch. If I scroll up in the properties here, you'll see that there is a maximum and a minimum value. Uh, so if I change the maximum value to 100, you'll see now we have 100 notches instead of 10. Uh, we could also set the minimum to 50, and that will give us only 50 notches. Um, and if we go ahead and run that, can see that we get much more granular control with these 50 notches that we're able to. It doesn't look like it's snapping as much as it was before. So that's how you can set the minimum and maximum. Um, we've looked at value, and value is the key one really. If we double click on our control, we get this trackbar scroll handler. So this will get fired every time the user scrolls through the trackbar. So if we just Put a breakpoint in here and we run the program. See, as soon as I drag, we hit the breakpoint. So it, it, you don't have to release the mouse, it's, it's as the mouse is dragging, it will update through this function in real time. So let's add some UI so that we can keep track of what the current value is. So let's just make this form a little bit bigger and we will add a label. Oh, I don't know why I scrolled to the top there. Come here and we'll grab our label and we'll go back into our form. And now when the track bar is scrolled, we'll update the label. So we'll say label one dot text equals and then we'll look at the track bar, track bar one dot value, and then we'll have to convert it to a string. So we'll use the dot to string method and then as we scroll, what we should see is the label is updated with the current value. So let's run that. So it starts as label one, and then as we drag, you'll see that we move between 50 and 100. If we close that off, last thing I'll do is I will just have a look at the, oh, I've got the wrong thing selected. If we go to the min and max values and we bring that back down to something sensible like 0 and 10 and what we'll do is we'll update those to those slightly less sensible values via a button click because you can, you can obviously update that in real time so if we make our button handler and we look at the track bar one dot maximum and we'll set that to 5000 and we'll run our program so you see we started off with this sort of 0 to 10 and when we press our button, we get this sort of, there's so many stations in there now that you can't really tell their notches. So I just wanted to show you that 
That's something that happens when you start working with much larger maximum values. And again, it's all updating in real time. So that's the basics of how you use the track bar. It's not one that I use a hell of a lot. Uh, it's useful if you need to, maybe you've got a sensitivity setting in your program, then these things are perfect for that type of scenario. Hi, I hope you found that video useful. If you have any comments or feedback, then please leave me a comment below. I'm currently doing new videos every single day. So if you'd like to be notified about those, then hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.